welcome to Lucy's Big Beautiful World of Painting. Uh, the first thing I'd like to show you today is a beautiful canvas um, that um, Frederick's Canvas Company sent me, and it is a natural cotton canvas, okay? It is so beautiful. Um, it has a natural color to it, and I'm gonna hold this white paper up so you can see the, um, the natural color. And this um, canvas, you can actually do embroidery on, okay? So um, you can uh, use it just as is. You don't have to paint the whole canvas and it actually looks better when you leave some of the canvas showing, okay? Like I did on um, this canvas that I'm going to uh, work on today, okay? So I had this idea of using um, fabric paints today because I was inspired by this canvas, which feels like such a great thick fabric, I decided to use DecoArt fabric paints. So um, first, I wanna show you how nice and thick this is. It's ready to hang, okay? So it's a create and hang canvas. And what you can do is, if you have a tracing, you can put your tracing behind the canvas and just hold it up to a window. And this will shine through enough that you can at least get your, um, your tracing onto it, okay? So I'm gonna put this one down for now, and I'm going to get started. So right now, um, I have my, my fabric paints um, laid out in no particular order, and um, this is probably three times the amount that I'm going to need for this. These um, paint are little bottles, but don't let that fool you because it goes a long, long way. This happens to be a medium, uh, that we can use when we're doing um, our painting on regular fabric. And this is um, glitter. You can actually use glitter if you're crafty and you want to dress it up a little bit. And they're flexible and permanent colors, okay? So I'm just going to move those out there. Today I'm not using the medium on this because I don't have to. This is already uh, acrylic clear prime, so I don't really need the um, to use that um, medium, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just dipping my brush. This is number six filbert. I always have to look on the brush to see what number it is because I forget. All right, so I'm just dipping in water, blotting my brush out, all right? And before I get started, I should say, what I did was um, I was looking at home for a magic marker and couldn't find one. I said, oh, I was too lazy to go to the store. I remembered I had the um, paint markers. These are the um, glass markers that you can use on glass. And I used them on the canvas and it worked beautifully, okay? So all I did was um, trace it out with one of these and it worked great. So I like to find different ways to use the products. All right, so here we go. So I'm all ready now. The canvas um, took just a minute to dry with even that, uh, that glass marker, okay? And let's see where we're gonna start today. I think I'll start down in this bottom area. So um, the paint, we're gonna put all the paint colors at the end, all right? And I'm just gonna go into this nice orange color. And you can see I just loaded the brush. So all I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna go around this edge, all right? And I'm on an angle, so you may see me go outside the lines a little bit, and that's okay, because I'm gonna show you what you can do if you go outside the line. I'm going to put some of that paint just around the edge. Now, I'm going to have a paper towel here that I can just blot my brush on. Let me get one out there and I'm gonna put it right on my, on my canvas, all righty. I can blot my brush on this paper towel and I'm just gonna go into some yellow. And you can see I just put a little bit on and I'm gonna put some of this yellow in the middle. You can see how nice it's staying, it's just sticking right to the canvas, it's great. And this is permanent. It didn't matter if this got stuck in water, it would stay just as is, permanent paint, all right? So I'm gonna actually dip in a little bit of water. I have just a little bit of cup there, uh, uh, full with water, and I'm just gonna put some water on and give it a little bit of a watercolor effect. Now, I'm not sure if the color, if you can see that change in color too much. So when I get to the other flower, I'll do it a little bit brighter. The other thing I can do is I can go into a lighter yellow and I can just come in here and you can see I'm just laying the paint on, all right? But you know what I'd like to show you before I go any further? Just in case you go outside the line, all right? All you would have to do is take your, your fabric brush and you can just make another line around it and then fill that in. See, I just made it a little three dimensional. So if I happen to go outside of this one, I can just go like this and then 
fill in, in it uh, the rest of it, okay? I hope that makes sense, and I can do that in a little while. So I'm gonna continue to paint in here. I'm gonna go back to my orange. You don't have to keep changing the colors. I mean, the uh, washing the brush out, all right? So I'm gonna paint in around that. I can wipe my brush off. I'll go to the lighter yellow and get some yellow in. Now, I wanna show you what you can do with this. Just like you're painting on a regular canvas, which this is a regular canvas, but what I mean with the fabric paint, I'm just going to blend. So as I go around the edge, I'm just laying it on a little thick, and then I can just blend over a little. Okay, so I'll go to the next one. And here we go, again, going around the edge, around the edge. There we go. And you can see it is filling in the tooth of this canvas, okay? And that's what we want. Now this will not bleed through the canvas. Again, this is a coated canvas. So it will not bleed through. Back to the yellow. Get a little yellow in here and just blend it. Now, the other thing I can do is after I see the coloring, okay? If I want it even lighter, I have a, a nice buttermilk color on here on my palette, I can come in and I can just put a little bit of highlight. So you can see I'm kind of blending a little, real lightly putting it on, okay? So that, that kind of, I think that's a little better. So as you do it, you'll see, I, I should say every time that you do a painting, you will see, um, you know, more ideas, you'll get more ideas as, as you're seeing what you're doing, <laughs> okay? So here we go to the next one. And again, with that nice orange color, and I had some of that, that buttercup still on there, and that's fine. Um, these are lilies, and no two are alike. Okay, so if each one comes out a little different, each petal, that's fine. There we go. And filling it in. Okay, so you can see um, how it's starting to pop off the page, off the uh, canvas. And the natural color now is starting to show a little. And that's very pretty because I always feel that I have to fill the whole canvas. And with this kind of a canvas and this natural color, you don't have to. So I hope that um, while you're watching me, you're getting ideas of what you can use these for. All right, here's another one. And again, at the end. Now, when you're painting on regular fabric, okay, for example, cotton fabric, um, what I'd like to do is put the medium on and just paint it on just as I'm painting and then let it dry for a minute and then when you go back you put a little water on the brush okay and when you put a little water on the brush it makes it look like a watercolor and it's beautiful and again these are permanent so you can put them on your on your jeans and sweatshirts and whatever, and it's, it makes makes a great gift. And this um, this kind of canvas is a great gift because um, you just hang it. When you're done, that's it. Up it goes. Okay, so there's one flower uh, done. So I have these buds over here. I'm going to do one of these buds now. Now, I notice that the buds a lot of times are green at the end here before the flower opens. So what I'll do is I'll put a couple of different oranges here just to make it look a little more colorful and have a little variety okay so that's the one the darker orange now I'm gonna go to a lighter orange and like I said at the end we'll pop those colors on there in case you really like any of these colors and want to get these and again to the orange now you could do one at a time I just figured for the sake of time I'll, I'll just do it this way and do these three. This way I know have, I have enough time to go through the rest of it, okay? There's the other orange, and then I'll put even a little yellow on this side. Oops, see, I went out of line there, and that's okay. It could be fixed. I have some, some shows that I say it's fine to go out the lines, it looks better, and then other ones I say, oh, we want to try to stay in the lines. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to dip in a little water there, and I just want to come in. I didn't put any are of the lighter color in that one. And I'm just gonna pull this down a little and all I used was some water there, all right? I'm gonna take a nice green. I'm gonna go with my darker green first and I'm just gonna dab a little of this dark green in here. I'm trying to stand on the side here so I may go out a little on the angle I'm on. Put a little green. And when I come down here, I'm just putting the tip of the brush in a very, very little bit of paint, and I, I mean that, a bit of paint. You hardly need any paint. These little bottles go such a long way. Now, 
I'm wiping my brush off. I'm going into a lighter green and I'm just going to get a little bit of a lighter green on each one of these, okay? And then I'll show you that I'm going to blend it up a little. All right, dipping in water. You could dip in water when you feel it gets a little dry. And just using the side of the brush, I'm just pulling it up. And I'm very, very lightly just feathering it in. You can see I'm just pulling it. I'll go slow here. All I'm doing is pulling it up into the orange. And I want to just get that a little more blended. So you can see, just like using acrylics or oils, you can even blend this fabric paint. All right? So it's wonderful. There we go. And I think I'll pull it up a little more. I like the way my example um, that I did before looks, how, we pull, how I pulled it up into this, this bud. Because this is where, right before the flower is going to open. So you see some of uh, the greenery and then you start to see some of the um, color of the flower. Okay, and these also come in pink. The lilies are all different colors. And I'll stand back in a little while and take a look at that, all right? I'm gonna go on to this other um, flower. And I think what I'll do for that, I am rinsing my brush out just a tiny bit since I had the green in there. I just swished around in a cup of water, all right? I think what I'm gonna do with that one is I wanna make it more of a yellowish color. Okay, now I didn't do that on my example, but I'm going to do it now. I want to make sure that you can see how well this works and how beautiful these colors are. So this is a, a mid, mid yellow because you know these, these lilies come in yellow and pink and all different colors. So let's just be even more creative today. And I think I'll do two at a time before I change my color. All right, let me turn my hand a little bit, make sure you can see. So I'm just actually just rubbing this in, just like painting on any other canvas. All right, now I'll go to a lighter yellow, and I'll see, oh, I don't see much different with that light yellow. So what I'll do is I'm leaving that yellow on, and I'm going to just put some of my buttermilk color on there. There we go. So now we have a lighter color in the middle, and I'll just blend those out a little. And what I can do is, which I haven't tried before, but we'll try it now. I'm going to go in a little bit of orange and even get a little orange in there. So see how I'm just kind of, as I'm painting, I'm deciding how I want to change the color. All right? So nice, nice orange. I think I need a little bit more orange to let it stand out. There we go. All right? That's much better, I think. It's nice to have these nice colors. Now, same thing. I'll go over to the yellow, and I'll come on the side here. I want to make sure you all can see. And see, I have some orange that was mixed in. Hopefully, that'll show. And I like that, that the colors blended together. And that's because I'm not washing the brush. If you want your, your colors definitely distinct, then just rinse your brush out in between, pat it on a paper towel, and then you can continue. I'm going to get some of that light color in there since I had some orange on there. And now I'm using the side of the brush, okay? So this, this is a really nice little filbert that can be used for any medium at all. There we go, so that's nice and light. So I'll wipe that off and go back into the orange, get a little bit of orange on top, okay? So I'm just blending as I'm going along, pushing those colors together. You can see down here, it's already drying, all right? So it dries fast, and that's good, because then what I can do after it dries, I may say, you know what, I need a little more color in there. And it'll stay right on top, rather than blend, after it dries, it's going to stay on top. So I can come back in later and do some highlight colors. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, and back to my top flower. Here we go. And you can see I'm going, and I, I went a little bit on that black, and what you'll do then is when you're done, you'll go back to your your black marker, and you can go around it again and neaten it up, okay? So I especially, um, I like to give a lot of um, gifts, art gifts. So then I am very particular because I want it to be perfect for whoever I'm giving it to because the person that's getting an art gift for me means I really like them if I'm giving up one of my paintings. <laughs> so um, you want to, you know, you want to be as neat. And of course, you know, when you're home, you'll take your time. Now I went into that, that, bright yellow, okay? And you can see I'm just painting back and forth, filling in that tooth of the canvas. And I like the idea of mixing the colors, okay? So what I wanna do is I just wanna blend a little bit of this 
lighter color in. There we go. Okay, so you can see that um, even a small painting, you can, you can um, get done in a reasonable amount of time. You don't have to go as fast as I'm going, of course. All right, and like I said, wonderful gifts. And especially this canvas where you can just hang it right up on the wall. So I'm gonna go into some of this greenery and um, then I wanna go back and show you how I put the stamen on. Now, on my original um, painting, what I did was I actually put the stamen on before I started painting, and now, um, after doing that one time, I like the idea of painting and then drawing in the stamen with the glass marker, okay? So I found that to be easier. So like I said, every time you do a painting, um, you'll see what's easier for you next time, and that's how we all learn, all right? So I'm gonna get some green in here now, and I'm gonna go to this middle green and go to this big leaf, and I wanna get this very pretty avocado color in. And just to give it a little bit of depth, I'm gonna wipe off that brush. I'm gonna to go to, <clears throat> excuse me, a, the lighter green. And you can see that's a lighter green, all right? Light, I'll just, again, wipe off a little yellow, little white, little buttercup, and I'll put a lighter color in there. Now, before that starts to dry, I'm just dipping my brush in the water and dabbing it. I'm just gonna blend it a little bit. So this way we have a little gradation of color even on the leaf, all right? So I just wanna show you how you can change this if you want to, um, you know, by adding, adding colors and dip, all right? There we go. So now this little under part of the leaf, I think I'll go to the darker. The darker green, okay? That's what I did on my other one. I like the way that looks. So I'll just fill this in with the dark. And you can see I'm just rubbing, just painting normally. I'm, I'm turning the brush to go on the chisel edge to get into this, this little part in the corner. You can see I'm doing this whole painting with just one brush, all right? Not necessary to, to change brushes, um, even, unless you wanted to do these bigger parts with a bigger brush, but it's very relaxing if you're just sitting, um, just to take your time with the small brush and to, um, to fill that in the way you like. All right, so I'm going to go back here and I'll try to do this from the side. I wanna get in this darker green and you can see I went outside that line a little, that's okay. As you can see, I went a little over the line. I try to clean that up a little bit with my finger and you can try to wipe it while it's still wet and that'll help you. I'm just gonna leave it for now. I'm going to come in with a little bit of this other green and give this a little depth. This way we have a couple different colors there, okay? And like I said, after I'm done, I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna show you how to neaten up a little bit. I'm gonna show you how to add a little bit of highlights, all right? So for now, I'm just going to come back into my darker green. Again, just coming to the end of the, the puddle. But I wanna show you something while I remember. Um, Here's my paint palette, and you can see I'm using a tiny, tiny bit. So again, don't let the deco art smaller size um, bottles fool you. That one little bottle, you could do dozens and dozens of products, um, projects and all, okay? So here we go, I'm going back to my green, again, out of the line. I'm sorry, it's the angle I'm on. I'm trying to be very careful. This angle is a little bit difficult. Um, when you're doing a project like this, you may not even want to do it on an easel. You can be comfortable, you can sit with your feet up on the couch and really relax and, um, and work on it, okay? And again, think about gifts. This is beautiful gifts, ready to hang. You don't have to go out and buy a frame for it, all right? So I'm just coming in again now with the lighter green and I'm just pulling that down into the bottom. I wanna go a little further. Well, there's a little bit of detail work. I'm gonna take the lighter green now and come and put some into this one. I had that dark green in the brush. So I'm just gonna get some light green on and then I'm gonna go back with the dark green. Just to try something a little different, give this uh, painting a little bit more variety because I'm only using a few colors, a limited palette. All right, there we go. So I have some of that light green. I think that looks pretty good. Now, I, I do want to go highlight that, that branch there because to me that looks a little bit too dark. All right, again, I'm coming in 
with this lighter one. There we go. And I just want to show you something that um, I did before, okay? When I said if you go a little bit out of the lines, you can come in um, with your pen and you can neaten that up. So what I noticed was this um, stem would be going through the flower, which doesn't make sense. So all I would have to do is I can come in here and again with this glass writer out of all things and I can just come right like this through the whole thing and now this stem looks like it's behind that flower petal. So again, if you don't want to paint it all in, look, you can come in and you can dress up your painting just like that, all right? Now here, again, I said before, you can just come over and you can work on this for a long time, make it nice and neat. You can go back, you can darken certain areas. I, I noticed over here, I went over See how I can just come in and neaten it up, all right? So I'm going to do most of my neatening up later. I just wanted to show you how you can, and it even makes it pop more, okay? Now, you don't have to use black. I just chose to use black with this project. This way it really translates well on the nice natural canvas and to the camera, of course. So, um, you know, the, the glass pens work fine. If that's all you have there, you can use those. And let me go back to my little green leaf down here. And I put the lighter green on there. And I'm leaving that light green on. Just dipped a little in the dark green. And there we go. And I'll put this dark green under here. So just going to swoosh around in the water, wipe it off a tiny bit, and come back and blend a little. All right. So I have a couple more things to show you. Now, from that side, see I covered this whole leaf up. That's okay. I'm going to come back with that pen and I'm going to neaten this all up later. So I do want to get the little, the little parts of these tops on of the flower. So I'm just going to dab a little bit in here. Then I want to come back with a lighter color. All right. And again, when you see me put my arm down here, in case it doesn't show, I'm just rinsing off my brush a little, put a little yellow, Want to make that a little, a little lighter to give a little contrast. All righty, move those out of the way. Now, in in these middle sections, I went into a nice brown color and put a little bit of brown in here, very lightly. All right, there we go, and make it pop out a little bit more. I'll go and do the other one. So you can see, I'm just using the chisel end of the filbert, all right? So you can use the flat side or the chisel end. So I'm still not reaching for another brush, all right? That's what makes this so nice. You're not gonna be changing your brushes. It's a more relaxing type of project. Uh, kids can do this too. It's not anything, um, you know, that um, you need, um, you know, a painting skill for, okay? If you can color in a coloring book, you could do this. Uh, you do just want to um, learn how to blend the paint a little bit, which is, which is easy to learn. Now, I want to show you um, what I did with the stamen. On my original painting, I put them in, um, you can probably see, I don't know if you can see, I have a little pencil mark in there. Um, I put them in before, okay? But I want to show you that it's easier if you put it in um, after, okay? So, Usually the stamen comes out in different ways, so I could just come here, and there we go, and there we go. Now, if it's wet, of course, it, it could bleed a little. So um, best bet is just to wait a couple, a couple minutes, and you can get that in so it won't bleed, all right? And I want to just make a little circle, all right? A little circle, a little circle, all right? So that looks pretty good like that. And I will go in with uh, a little bit of that brown, maybe dip in a little yellow, see what I get there, and just dot that in here, all right? Dot it in, dot it in. I'll come down to the other flower, okay? So I think that's easier when you're doing the stamen rather than um, put them on at first. So you can go back and forth between the pen and, and the paint, all right? So I'm gonna get a couple of these going this way and maybe even up this way. All right, make them a little different angles. Just drawing a little half a circle on top there. All right, very easy.
Now, like I said, ideally, it would be good if you let them dry, and I can let them dry a little bit, and then I can go back and put in some, some highlights. All right, so I'm going into my, into my light yellow. Now, this should be pretty dry now, so I can come in and put this right on top so I won't be blending, okay? When it's wet, you'll be blending. When it's dry, you're just kind of putting the color on top, all right? And I'll do a little bit more for you here. And this one, I'd like to fill in a little. So now I'm just looking back and forth and seeing that I missed a few spots. And that's something, like I said, you'll do when you're taking your time with this. Um, this branch here to me looks a little bit too, um, too dark green, all right, too dark. So I'm gonna come in, just kind of put a little bit of a lighter color on there. All right, I see a couple spots I miss. So that's what you do. After you're done and you get 95% of your coloring on there, I want you to step back and take a peek and say, oh, you know what? I like this maybe a little darker or that maybe a little lighter. All right, I see where I missed a little spot in here. I can come back in and put a little orange in here. All right, this is a little delicate work, but like I said, as long as you can color in a coloring book, you can do this. Um, this is the same way um, that you'll use the Soswa fabric paints on um, clothes. I suggest that you get a crisp cotton fabric um, and use the, the medium, all right? So you, let the, you just paint the medium on, let it dry a couple minutes, and then you can use a little more water and your painting on your clothes will come out like watercolor and it's beautiful. So just about getting ready to wrap this up. So I'm going to just get these little top of the stamen in there, put a little more, and I'll just step back and see if I can just make it a little bit more attractive before I go, all right? So this flower to me looks like it's a little too dull, all right? So looking back at this one, I like that one better. So I'm gonna come in and I wanna put a little bit of the orange on. So I'm just gonna go on these tips and see, it's, it's going right on top cause it's dry, but I'm still, it's kind of feathering it. I'm using the side of the brush and I'm feathering it, all right? And that's gonna give it a little bit more color without losing the bottom color, all right? I can go here. So you can see, I can go back and forth and dress it up with the, with the paint that I've already have out. Same thing here. I like the idea of making that a little bit more orange on top. And I noticed that it's drying and it's drying a little darker, which I like, all right? And that is just about it. I hope that you enjoyed watching me do this, this project on this wonderful uh, canvas from Fredericks and that you'll take a look at the So Soft paints and um, come up with some of your own ideas on what you can do, okay? And feel free to write to me, I'll be happy to help you. And I'm gonna cheat and take my, um, my glass writer and actually sign it. There we go. Thanks for tuning in and see you soon.